Hey, everybody. How are we doing? Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Oh, okay. Armando made it. Larry, Fran. Uh, huh. Oh, this is Jean. Okay. Yeah, okay. And uh, Lady, you're here. Naomi's here. Okay. Richard's here. Uh, I think Linda. You guys just come up with user and then Veronica. Okay. All right. So we got a few people. We're going to get started. How was lunch, everybody? Pretty good. How was yours, Joe? Wonderful. Well, it was good. I was busy. Um, because uh, I just got a email from Sabrina Hudson. Uh, they're supposed to be doing the survey this afternoon around about four o'clock. I uh, got it. it. You got it? Okay, good. Yes. Yeah, so if everybody, you know, if you haven't responded, uh, please respond to it um, so that we can kind of include you in the survey. That would be a nice thing, right? Right. Okay. So, uh, so it's important that you, you, you know, send back that information to them. And from what I understand, the survey is going to be by the telephone. They're going to call. And it's a simple one question survey. I think you hit one for yes, two for no, or something like that. They'll explain it to you. Um, and, and that's the survey. So it shouldn't take very long to do. Okay. So anyway, we're going to jump right in. We got a lot of stuff to uh, look at, a lot of stuff to cover. And, you know, we'll just get to it. Okay. All right. So can everybody see the girl with the pearl earring? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So, um, Avatel. Uh, sent these in, I think, last week, and uh, I think this was the first time, well, today that I've seen her. So, Avatel, are you unmuted? Mm, maybe not. Let's see, where are you? Oh, there you are. There. Yeah, now I'm... Now you're unmuted. Okay, good. All right, so uh, tell us a little bit about these, okay? Oh. Are, they, are they pastel, are they colored pencil? What kind of medium did you do them in? These are colored pencils on black paper. paper. Okay, all right. So you had some kind of black paper and then you worked colored pencil over it. And were these like Prismacolor pencils? What brand of pencil did you use? They are all kinds of mixture. In fact, they are not very good quality. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I was wondering if you can recommend something. Okay. All right. Well, I like a lot of what you did here with them. Um, you know, you could, you know, wh when you're laying that pencil down, you seem to be moving like in a, a direction, left or right, or, you know, more linearly, right? Uh, some places up here get a little more dense in color and it looks like you, you probably kind of just went like around in a circle to build up the color slowly and yeah. that seems to work better than working linearly unless you want to create, you know, some kind of line so that your, your eye follows the direction, you know, of the line or the form. And like here on the cheekbone, things like that that's all working pretty well. If you wanted to keep it softer though, again, you know, if you just kind of use it by making a circular motion with the pencil, you can build it up slowly uh, and, and build up your color that way, okay? And, and it will look more dense, not quite so streaky, all right? Yeah. But you know, I know it's always fun working with those and trying to get used to you know, to using those. Um, a lot of times, one of the things that uh, I used when I did a lot of illustration work was I did a, a color base and I just put in like blocks 
you know, of color and sometimes I would grade eight value or something. And then, and I'd be working on like a, a uh, either a piece of Bristol board or a hard illustration board. And then I would use color pencil to come back in and build up, uh, you know, like more subtle color variations and transitions and then put in like details, you know, actual drawing over the, uh, you know, those color blocks, okay? And, and that could be a good effective way of working with that kind of medium as well. Okay. So I'm, I'm kind of assuming is this, this looks more like pastel or chalk to me. Actually, yeah, this is actually regular white chalk. Okay. Yeah. And then I, on top of it, I started to, to use colored pencils, the same the mm -hmm. same ones I used for the other one. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm not clear how I'm trying to mix colors, just like you said, be slow to build up the, the color and the texture. Yeah, you've got to, well, first of all, the paper you're working on, it looks like a Canson paper, you know, something that's got a little more texture to it. It does. Yeah, so it's got, you know, it's kind of a little bit rough. And uh, you, you can use colored pencil on that. Again, you just have to lay it down on the side and kind of work in a circular motion. And, and don't get real aggressive with it. You know, just be patient. Just keep going over the area until you build up your color. Okay? Yes, yes, thank you. All right. Um, then uh, Bernice sent in a piece. I don't know whether she's here or not. Yeah, I'm uh, here. Are you here? Okay, good. Yeah. All right, so this is a picture of, is this your family? Uh, yes. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. And then I'm guessing, is this the lady that you did the- uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, okay. Well, you got a good likeness of her. Well, and, I, didn't, I didn't paint her. I just cut, cut and pasted it. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so this is- <laughs> We said mixed media, so I said this is mixed media. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, mm -hmm. that would that would definitely make it a mixed media piece. So then you took that photograph and did you make a copy of it and then trim her out? Mm-hmm. That's okay. what I got. Me a copy, made it bigger, and then trim her out, and okay. then some background to put on top of it. Okay. And how did you how did you put in the background? May I ask? Um, you you know I went on, went on on the internet and looked for a background, okay. and, just put, and just put it on the internet and then move her picture on top on top of the background. Okay, all right. And I, 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 and I found I found um, the neck from just another they they had about the same skin tone mm -hmm. and just put just put the neck in. It's it's all it's, it's about four or five um, different pieces that I just cut and paste and put them on there. Like okay. even even on her cheek, kind of rough looking. Mm -hmm. I took a um, uh, shape and just just round, just rounded the shape so so her edges wouldn't look so rough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you did a nice job at it. I mean, um, I don't see like a lot of the cut marks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So so you blended it in really nicely. Thank you. Thank you. So you did a really nice job on that, okay? Yeah, I was I was curious. I didn't know whether this was a drawing or a painting or how you went about, you know, producing this. But you you did a good job. Thank you, thank you. Okay, and you said it's about what five or six inches? It's five by seven. Five by seven. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's a relatively kind of small piece. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. And you got it framed and you know, it's a nice, you know, you put it in a nice frame. It's got a really nice effect to it. So, mm -hmm. so, so who was this? Oh, that, that's my first cousin. Okay. Right. Uh, what, 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 what really happened is, we, we were looking at old pictures and, mm -hmm. and I was sending them to everyone and she, she doesn't know how to get pictures off of her text. So I said, I will send over one. I thought, if it wasn't just, you know, just a plain picture, I'll, I'll just make it something special. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, you did a really nice job with that. Okay. All right. So moving on here, uh, somebody asked about this earlier. Um, this was a drawing that Betty Bates sent in. We were we were talking yeah. about um, that Russian artist and how how he built up the paint surfaces and how the, the surfaces were very textural, you know, and then you had kind of flatter areas. And uh, my comment was that, you know, Betty had taken the camellias and had kind of come up with his little abstract drawing, you know, of the camellias. Um, and there's some really, really nice things going on there, you know, as far as the movement, the shapes, and the change in value and uh, texture in those areas. And so, you know, it's it stopped being flowers and now it's kind of become something else, right? And I had taken, and somebody had asked, because they wanted to see this. And again, I just put it in Photoshop and I just put a couple of color layers on it and then, you know, mm -hmm. cut away some of it and erased, you know, other parts, letting other parts show through. But if you, um, if you wanted to, you could work digitally. But again, you know, you could take this design and crop it and play with it. And it doesn't have to end up looking like a vase of flowers. It's just something to begin with, you know, as a starting point. And then you kind of build from there and make, you know, literally kind of create a piece of art, you know, from that. Okay. And you can do that with anything, you know, it could be something from nature, it could be a piece of music, it could be a poem, uh, it could be letters or a word or, uh, you know, it could be a, a figure, you know, from life, you know, and you're doing, taking your gesture drawings or sketches and then converting them into, you know, a painting from there, but not necessarily a painting about a figure, but more about the movement and proportion and value, you know, light and dark areas and patterns and things. So they become, you know, this abstract, you know, piece of work. All right. So um, anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, Beverly sent that in last week. And uh, I don't think I don't think we got to look at it uh, in this class. But I wanted yeah, to show it to you. We did. Pardon? I think we did. Oh, did we? Okay. No, we didn't. I uh, need some critiques. I'm sorry, what? No, this is Beverly. I said, no, we didn't. I need you to critique it. And I have a oh, question. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. At any rate, yeah, I what I said about it, because I don't think you were here last week when, you know, I think I looked at it real quick, but I don't think you were here, so we kind of moved on. Um, this is a really, really nice piece, you know, that you did. And when did you do this? About a year ago. And my question was, over the year, it seems like the hair kind of muted and disappeared. And I wanted to know, what can I do to retouch the hair? Uh-huh. Now, is this in oil or is it's it? Oil. Good? It's, it's oil. oil yeah. Have you varnished it? No, I haven't. Okay, varnishing it will do that. Oh, okay. So I don't need to touch it up any? No, because what's happened over the year is that the oil has, you know, dried and it's the paint has done what we call oxidize. Okay. Okay. So what it's telling you is that okay, those darker colors and things have completely dried now and they will. They'll get it's almost like a little bit of a, a a film over it and and so the paint will begin to look a little dull and all okay. you really have to do is just varnish it at this point all right because it's what it's telling you is that it's now completely dry so now it's ready for a coat of varnish all I right you suggest that uh, satin varnish that you recommended yeah um i would and you can you can get well, what I generally use these days is I use, uh, it's a satin varnish. It's made by Windsor Newton. Okay. 
and you can uh, you can I know that you can buy it at uh, Sam Flax downtown. Uh, I think you can get it. I think you can get it through binders. Okay, but they have to order it. Right? Okay. But either, either of those sources, but it's a Windsor Newton and it's a satin varnish. And, right. um, and that's a spray varnish, okay? Which, which I find, you know, you lay your piece, you have to take it out of the frame, you lay it down flat, you know, you work one direction, you know, and get a good coat of varnish on it, let it set up and dry for a bit, and then come back and work the other direction at a 90 degree angle. And then okay. keep, working back and forth um and you're probably going to have to end up putting like about you know three to four layers of varnish on it how big is this piece i think it's tw um 16 by 22 i'm not saying that right okay um hmm. 22 by 28 uh, okay yeah yeah so it's it's a fairly good sized piece so yes. uh you know, so one, take it probably outside would be the better place to use that because of the fumes. Um, and probably a covered area like a, a covered porch or something like that. And, and again, you know, just spray it, you know, working one direction at first, cover the whole piece, and then come back maybe a half hour later and go back the other way and give it about a half hour or so between every coat. And like I said, do, do at least, you know, probably three coats in every, you know, each direction. So that's like six passes on it, okay? Okay. And, and just, you know, again, you know, just try to get it as even as you can. But, you know, the thing with varnish is don't stop in any one spot. You know, start off the edge of the piece, go across it, all the way off and then come back again and just you know you're going to get a little overspray and that's fine you know you you know you want to just keep going you don't want to stop right at the edge because you'll build up puddles if you stop short okay so just go all the way off and then come back again all right all right thank you yeah and now one, of, one of the things i did because i fussed at everybody uh, because they've been sending uh, you know photographs of their work in and it kind of looks like this and it's kind of distorted right looks like you're looking downward at this and what I want you to do is I want you to try to line it up so that it's square in your phone or your camera so you get something more like that mm -hmm. okay now what I did is I just took this and I distorted it in Photoshop so the proportions probably are not exact but you see it just you know, when you're looking at it square like that, it's less distracting and you get to see the artwork, okay? Yeah, it looks much better. It looks yeah. good. So just, you know, just try to take a little more time and hang it on a wall or whatever you have to do and try to, you know, get the phone in front of it so it's more square, okay? Okay. And then, Do you want to comment on the, on the uh, light on the water? That's wonderful. You know, how, it, it, how I see the sun? And then it skips the purple and it gets down to the brown. You see the light on the water. That mm -hmm. is fantastic. Yeah, she did a beautiful job, you. you know, with mm -hmm. the whole piece. And yeah, the lighting is really nice. Water yeah. looks, you know, credible. It looks like, you know, light hitting the surface of the waves. And then actually the, the light coming out of the vessel that she's holding and yeah. how it's lighting her face, you know, from underneath. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you pulled that effect off really nicely. So. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Yeah, really good job on all of that. Um, I think we talked about this, you did a while ago. Yes. All right, so moving on, I'm gonna try to get to everybody's work here first. All right, Eloise, um, that was your Stone Mountain piece. Are you there with us? Yes, I am. You uh, talked about it the other day. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. In the inspiration class. But I wanted to show it to folks here because this is the painting class and this is a painting. So um, and you said that you had gone out to Stone Mountain, you had photographed this. And yes. 
And now, is this an acrylic or an oil? Can't this remember. is an acrylic. Right. Okay. It's an acrylic. Right. And the thing I kind of wanted to point out about this piece to everybody is look at how she managed, you know, to paint the clouds. And, you know, they're there. You know, but it, they feel like clouds. They feel soft. Um, and, you know, that's kind of hard to do with acrylic, you know, get all those soft edges and things. But you, uh, you handled that really nicely. Okay. Thank you. And then we talked about your composition. And uh, I actually like the composition of this. You know, it's, it's coming in really from the, you know, right-hand side, you know, moving across back to the mountain. And then you kind of, you know, follow the ridge and then down the pole. And, you know, it's, the eye travels through the painting really nicely. So, you know, I think you worked out the composition in that really, really pretty well. So. Thank you. No, no complaints there, right? Um, Elsie, are you here? Elsie Jester? No? Okay. All right. How about Fran? Yes, I'm here, Charles. All right. So Fran sent in uh, two pieces. She sent in this, and this is ballpoint pen, right? Yeah, ballpoint pen. Yeah. And so here's your camellias in ballpoint pen. And you kind of reversed the lighting on this a little bit uh, yeah. by putting the shadow over on the right yeah. side. Yeah. yeah. But it works to nice effect. Um, Why did you uh, why did you choose ballpoint pen? I'm curious. I usually draw with ballpoint ballpoint pen. Mm -hmm. I know I stopped drawing with pencil. Uh, now I'm doing ballpoint pens. Okay. All right. Are you did you do this in your uh, sketchbook? Yep. Okay. Now that's a good reason to use ballpoint pen. Or like a fine line pen or a marker or a prismacolor pencil. Because for years, you know, I did a lot of drawings in charcoal and in graphite in my sketchbooks. And I like those media, but the problem is that over time, uh, you know, you come back a couple of years later and you open up your sketchbook and the drawings on each side of the page have merged together, you know. Uh, they rubbed off on each other. And if you, if you sketch in pen or you use like a Prismacolor pencil, you know, it's a permanent media and it's not going to transfer off onto the other side of the page for you. Right. So that your, your sketchbooks, you know, stay kind of clean and pristine. Otherwise, after about 20 or 30 years, you know, it, you know, your, your nice figure drawing or whatever you had on one side of the page has merged with your uh, still life and landscape on the other. And they've made, you know, uh, an abstract piece of art out of the two of them so so yeah ballpoint pen is not a bad choice uh, thank you okay and then um now this looks like it's what graphite Char charcoal. charcoal charcoal okay charcoal. all right and this is two penguins um yeah. any idea what kind of penguins they are no i don't know <laughs> i don't know i don't know you don't okay nope. Yeah, they, they look like they're either like young chicks, you know, because they look like they've got this light, uh, fluffy coat on the outside of them. So they don't look like they're, you know, like mature penguins yet, you know, mm -hmm. with their black tuxedos on yet. Yeah, you're right. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice drawing. Thank and, you. You know, it's, it's, it's nice the way you handled and you really push the darks and things in around the faces so that they become, you know, the focal point, and then you soften, you know, everything outside that. Uh, so it really does direct your focus, you know, right into the faces. So that's, that's working pretty well for you, okay? Thank you, Charles. All right, and Elon said he wasn't gonna be here this afternoon. So we'll, we'll talk badly about him when he's here. Um, and then Jean, so Jean sent in three pieces, right? No, four pieces. Uh, this was a drawing that she had done. 
Gene, are you here? Yeah. I'm here. Yep, I see you. Okay. You know, I just see your eyes sticking up above. Get a better view of the paintings that now instead of me. Yeah. Anyway, um, so so this is in what? Is this in like uh, graphite or is this in charcoal? Well, all I had was a. It looked like a black crayon and and a regular just a writing number two pencil. I didn't. I don't have any uh, pencils at all. Yeah. Other than that, I really don't have any good, uh, you know, like a, a small drawing pen either. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's one of the camellias. And what I have, no, that's the road, and that that I smudged a little bit to get the, uh, you, you know, when I did the pencil, the pencil mm -hmm. part, I just took my finger and smudged it to get the grays. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now with the with the crayon, could you move that, or was it? with the pencil with the number two pencil I yeah, drew it in the only thing you could really move. okay right and smudged it and then I used the the black crayon to to really pull some of the background and some of the color inside the uh, rose oh okay so you went back over with a white crayon okay I see that uh -huh. okay and then this looks like your version of the girl with a pearl earring Right, it's another. It's another one. I did. I sent in another one with. Yeah, yeah I see it down there. Right. Yeah, th and this is just watercolor on some, and uh, some rough, some smooth white cardboard, just a plain cardboard. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, it actually took the watercolor pretty well. So. Yes. All right, and did you the outline and the drawing part of it was that done with the crayon or? No, nope, that's all. That's all watercolor. All oh, including the line work here? Yep. Oh, okay. Did you do that with like a real fine brush? Nope. That was a big uh, round brush uh, with the black, which I never use black, but I did that mm -hmm. because of the, the hair to, to pull the figure out, uh, put it behind so I could pull the figure out. Okay. Hmm. Like a shadow. Yeah, I see it back here and then I yeah. see it. You know, up here and the, the eyes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Huh. Well, you got a really fine line for that really big brush. So it's you, got a good point on. Okay. All right. And then, probably, is this about the same kind of thing? Um, that's or, done with pen and ink, and then the watercolor wash behind it. Okay. All right. Yeah. And and the the hair and the for the front front figure is uh, uh, watercolor, yeah, the black kind of watercolor to pull it pull it in the front. You mean all the yeah. lines up in here? Right. I started out with just a a, a, a pen. I believe it's a pen. Yeah. And I and I just made it linear, and then I put the three on one on top of the other just to. I don't know, to see what I could do with it. Okay. Yeah. Well, it made a nice, you know, it made a nice drawing. So. Um, yeah, also with the earring. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it, you did what I asked you something to do. I didn't do. And I just was just trying to something different. That mm -hmm. was all. Yeah. And actually, I've got more pieces from you. Yeah. Yeah, I did a, yeah, a garden with the pen and ink and then watercolor right. back. Yeah, you sent that in, I think, last week. And then, yes, I did. Yeah, I think maybe we went over it briefly, but then this is the one you sent in most recently. Yes. That, that looks more like watercolor, maybe some pencil or pen. Uh, yes, pen. It's okay. watercolor and then I used the pen. Okay. Yeah. And you got a nice soft effect on the petals. You know, it changed really nice changes in color between warmer and cooler temperatures. So, so yeah, you did. You handled that really nicely. Well, I don't know. Um, and then we have your peaches. Right. Now, is this watercolor as well? That's watercolor. Right. Yeah. That piece originally was, uh, I think, a 16 by 20 piece. Okay. All right. Well, we're down to our last 
10 minutes, so I need to move faster because there's a few things I want to cover here. Um, now, John, are you here? Maybe? Yep. Oh, okay, here he is. Yeah, yep, so, yeah, so there's the camellias. Now, you did this uh, on the computer, right? Yes, correct. Okay, it's and a, what, it's what app called uh, Sketchpad? Sketchpad, okay. Yeah, so he's working on his computer and uh, and there's a lot of little applications out there that you can download. Uh, a lot of them are free. And you can download them and then you can uh, sit there and work right on your computer and it gives you, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve to them, but you, uh, you know, you can play a lot. Yeah, you can play, I, I haven't learned all, all the functions yet. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it usually takes a while, you know, to get through everything there. And uh, so you just, just keep playing with it. Yeah, I, was inspired, I was inspired by Betty. Okay. Well, I, I like the, the softness of it and the colors and, you know, and then in contrast to the line work, which tends to, you know, have a, a lot of gesture and movement to it. So, uh, it's a nice little piece. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have June. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, there she is. Finally, yay. <laughs> okay. So, so tell us a little bit about this lady sitting here on the settee. <laughs> yeah, this is the copy from you. You give us to look at the, the picture, I think. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, from you. From me? Yeah. Mm, okay. You, you, the, the, uh, the class, uh, you give, you show us some picture. And oh, you okay. want this. Right. I screen, screen the, the picture that. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. No, I mean, it's very classical pose. You know, um, classical pieces of furniture. So how big is this, June? Mm. Let me see. It's uh, I think it's uh, uh, ten by eight by ten. Eight by ten. It's small. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of small. All right. Yeah. So I got three things to say to you about this piece. Okay. Okay. You got a really good start on it. The thing I would say is you need more paint. <laughs> okay. You know, it's like. Okay. You know, You've got all the paint blocks in, you've got the composition set up. Um, but, you know, for most of the painting, like in the background and the piece of furniture itself, you could use, build up more paint and more color, you know. Okay. The, okay. And even in the flesh tones, you could kind of push a little more color in there. She's, uh, you know, she's a little tasty looking. Okay. <laughs> okay. And you know, even even if even if you have like really fair flesh tones, there's usually more color, you know, in the skin. Okay. Okay. All right. So, but I mean, it is it's a nice piece. It's just, you know, I want to see you get more paint on it. And uh, okay, uh, thank you. And handle the values on it. Um, and then we have your. Girl with a pearl earring, okay. And see, on this piece, you got more color in the flesh tone. And I think, you know, I like the way that you handled the skin tones in this pretty nicely, right? You got a nice separation between the shadow side of the face and the, you know, the light, right? Um, so, yeah, I don't have any real complaints about this. You know, again, your paint's a little bit thin, you know, in the background. So uh -huh. you, you know, it seems like you put things down one time and then you just kind of leave them alone, right? <laughs> and a lot of times you need to put a little paint down, with oil paint in particular, you put it down, you let it kind of set up, and then you go back and you, you, you may hit it several times to build up the paint. Okay. And, and you know, particularly if you're painting backgrounds, because the thing you don't want in a background is you don't want 
necessarily like a lot of texture, like a lot of brush strokes and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Because that distracts you from, you know, the focal point in many cases. All right. Okay, thank you. All right, so moving on down real quickly. Uh, we have this piece, and ladies sent this in. And this is, uh, I think you said it, what, like a six by nine or something like that? Yes, it's a six by eight. Six by eight, okay. Yes. And, this, oh. and this is a poured painting, okay? And this is an acrylic, right? Yes. Okay, so explain to everyone, if you will, how you went about doing this. Um, the actual method of doing it or? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm really interested in the poor painting. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, almost like six to eight months watching them mm -hmm. and slowly getting all of the uh, paints and the uh, cell activators for it. And so this is my actual first, uh, it's called a flip cup. You fill the cups with different layers of uh, paints mm -hmm. on a clear, on a clean canvas. I just... Um, painted the canvas white first, and then I put all the paints in a plastic cup and mm -hmm. put the canvas on top of the cup and flipped it over. Okay. And, and, then, and then you let it and the cells are activated. The cells are activated, uh, believe it or not, by a, a hair treatment that you put in your hair. Uh -huh. And so it makes those big, those cell like those circular. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it makes almost like some kind of resist in there. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, when you say a, a cell activator, you said you use like a hair product. What, what yes. did you use? I'm it's um, the, brand, the brand name is um, OGX Coconut Milk. It's an anti breakage formula. Uh, okay. And I got it from CVS and it costs like 10 bucks. And it's a, it comes in a, a nice size container. And you only need a few drops to create the cells. And so um, okay. it's a container that will probably last for years unless I just go crazy and do a lot of paintings right fast. Yeah, you just need to paint bigger. Yeah, well, that again, this is my very first try. I'm, as we're talking, I'm looking at uh, 12 canvases that I purchased, big canvases. So my next one is going to be on a bigger canvas. Okay, good. Good, I look forward to see that. Um, now, so when you're putting your color in the cup, you're layering one color in at a time, right? Yes, you're layering one color in at a time. And that's what I've been um, watching the, the YouTube videos in this class. Is your class is really inspiring to understand, you know, which color goes well with what so you won't get a muddy effect. And, and so it's a, it's a learning process, but I really, I really like what came, what, what I was able to do when I did this one. Yeah. The thing I love the most is your description and oh. um, that you wrote. And so I copied it. And, oh. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, she was talking about, you know, the fact she did this painting and that it m made her reminisce about when she was younger, you know, with her mother on Sundays, you know, when they would go to church and the gardenias and, and things, and street cars. And, um, and it's, it, you know, that's one of the beautiful things about, you know, making a piece of art is, you know, it can do that, you know, it can take you back to other things. Yeah. Now we have less than a minute. Okay. And so I still have some more pieces to cover real quick. You know, probably cut me off, but I wanted to cover Linda's. She, she sent in four paintings. I and these were all, yeah, these were all done. Uh, they were started from life in the uh, painting from life class that we we held over at benson and so these are all models that actually sat you know for us in our class and uh and then there's a the vase that was actually i think it may be this vase it may be another vase i don't know uh, that but vase. Didn't, pardon it's that, it's that vase uh -huh. it's, it's the vase beside that lady right yeah okay oh. But, uh, you know, again, and these 